hoping that the Windies can grant him a special birthday gift with a whitewash of South Africa in tomorrow's third and final T20. Sir Richie, who is 53 today, says that the team will not be sitting back comfortably on the two wins, but will be looking to enter tomorrow's game with nothing less than victory in mind. You know, we're not going to relax. We've won series, yes, and we're happy and we've celebrated, but, you know, we were saving the celebration for, for after the, the next match. And um, I've always said it's never over until it's over. Um, I don't believe in celebrating too early. Um, our goal right now is to win the series 3 0 and accumulate some points and, and go up in the rankings. And um, that's the mood of, in the camp. And, um, you know, we're just looking forward to the next match and we're going to dig deep and hopefully we can have a, another very successful match. That game bowls off tomorrow afternoon at midday and can be viewed live on MCTV Sports Max as Channel 110. Greenhouse is out front after the Luther Thorne seniors held the sports today at the National Stadium. Green is leading with 317 points, followed by Yellow on 272. Red is in third spot on 220, while Blue House is fourth on 208. Marsha Boyce was at the stadium. The students of Luther Thorne Primary took to the National Stadium today for their in-house sports. Green were the defending champions, so let's see how they got going, starting with the under-11 girls' 400 meters. A full field for the first race of the morning. Kristen Bremo of Blue Blazers here quickly making up the stagger on her opponents. But with less than 150 meters to go, you could tell she went out too quickly and was tiring. Time for the Green Machines, Kishania Smith to take over. She would go on to win in 1 minute 22.94 seconds. Ahead of her teammate, Trevine Dorset, Bremo would take third, but the defending champs were off and running. Now to the 400 meters for under 11 boys. Yazid Daniel of Yellow would lead this one from start to finish. With form still intact in the closing stages, he slammed the field, going on to win comfortably in 1 minute 10.03 seconds, picking up victory for Yellow Tigers. Ty Ward of Red House was second, with Tashawn Clark of Green beating out Nathan Ford for third. We pick up the under-13 girls on the back stretch, with Julia Kelman of Red Lions trying to hold on to her lead, looking to make that kick for home. But she didn't have much left in the tank, as Keziah Clark of Blue would have a strong finish from lane one. Clark would go on to win in 1 minute 16 seconds flat. Alayla Moore of Yellow would be second, with Ariane Brathwit of Green coming through for third. Kelman was fourth. To the under-13 boys, and Christoph Yearwood of Green now coming into the picture, he was labeled as the one to beat. Heading into the final 100 meters, Dwayne Watson of Red on the inside was also in the run-in, along with his housemate Jonathan Boston in lane five. But Yearwood had the better kick and would power home to victory in 1 minute 10.25 seconds. Watson was second, while Elijah Harden of Yellow slipped in for third. Now for some of the faster sprints, the under-9 girls 80 meters. Emerging from the center in lane 5, Denisha Barnett of Red. She won in 12.43 seconds, ahead of Green's Larissa Brathwaite and Natara Clark. To the under nine boys, 80 meters. And on the inside, Nikolai Phillips would pick up another victory for the Red Lions. His winning time, 13 seconds flat. Keandre Haynes completed the 1 2 for Red, with Green's Jakai Harrison third. The novelty events capped off the morning session, but it was a good day of fun for Luther Thorne at the National Stadium. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. The overall winners will be known next Tuesday after the infants have their day in the sun. The Barbados Cycling Union is looking to prepare its members and athletes for success, not only in terms of performance on the road and track, but in other areas as well. Over the weekend, the BCU held a special workshop on working with the media at the Barbados Olympic Centre. A hardworking Marsha Boyce has that story. The workshop was conducted by the Australian-based Shaman Simpson, who's worked with athletes at various levels through our association with the Institute of Sports in Australia, as well as other organizations. They're on our side, right? They need a good story. You want to look good, and you want to give a good story. So we talk about the goal, we, we often talk about it as being what we call a win-win, mm. where they're not out to get us, 
but they need a good story. Simpson, who was here on holiday, actually grew up in Barbados and represented the island in synchronized swimming at the 1984 Olympic Games. For me, it was getting out of a pool, and sometimes there was a reporter right there who needed you to come up with something really good right then and there. With her experience as an athlete, broadcaster and learning and development consultant, she guided the participants, including athletes, officials and administrators, through areas such as media interview techniques, the use of social media, personal branding and public image, as well as public speaking. The interactive and practical session was enjoyed by the participants. The thing that stuck with me today is how to approach the media and, you know, what to say and what not to say. And I think it was very helpful for my future use. It's very important because um, before I was unsure of how to approach the media and now I, I know a little more, so it's very useful. I think the thing that will stick with me the most is our brand. Um, we have to be very vigilant of what we put into the media and know that people will be seeing it and it's a reflection of ourselves. This session is very important. Um, it's keen in knowing how to interact with the media after you finally get your success. Sinson summed up what she believes to be some of the most important areas for athletes to focus on. They need to think and prepare when they're considering how they're going to deal with the media and how they'll answer questions. And I have another, which is it's okay just to relax and be themselves. And the media just want to help the public get to know who they are a little bit and get to know a little bit more about what it's like to be a cyclist. So my two takeaways for them is relax. It's a conversation. And it's helpful if they just give some thought to how they might answer different questions about what they like about cycling, you know, how, how they hope to go in cycling ultimately, that sort of thing. This type of workshop was one of several that the BCU is considering with the strategic goal of improving the organization. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. Thanks, Marsha. Back to cricket. Shakib Al-Hassan, who represented the Barbados Tridents in the CPL, ran through the Brisbane Heat's batting lineup to set up a five-wicket win for the Melbourne Renegades in the Australian Big Bash. Al-Hassan snapped up four for 13 as the Renegades dismissed the Heat for just 80 in 17.3 overs. He's had the big hand swing is going. Got, got Pierce in the other night and he's got to the first ball of the night. The outswinger got him with Brett Lee and now he's out first ball of the night with the outswinger to Pattinson. In comes Pattinson. Oh, oh, he's got oh, a big appeal. It's